In the past couple of years, Beelink have made a reputation on creating budget mini PCs without compromise on speed or quality. And in today's video, we'll be reviewing the Beelink Sur 6. And we'll find out just how Beelink stay ahead of the competition. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this is what arrived. Indeed, it's another mini PC, and this was sent to us directly from Beelink. No cash has been exchanged, and all opinions are our own. And here's the box. This one's a B-Link Sur 6. It's very elegant and very black. Obsidian black. On the reverse it shows the specs, but outside that, the box is pretty plain. Hello. Comes with a manual covering many languages, such as English, German, Spanish, Italian, French, Russian, and Japanese. It covers the basics, like how to connect it up and which ports do what, and also how to upgrade your NVMe or memory. Using these orange tassels, we can pull it out. I didn't put mine away since I went for a slosh. On the plastic protecting the mini PC, there's this message. And the most important bit is to peel it off before use. This plastic that separates the two sections of the box feels very cheap, a stark contrast from the rest of the package. At the bottom we have a 1m HDMI cable, and a portable style power adapter. Much smaller and lighter than the standard power brick, a switching type, and it outputs at 19 volts and 5.26 amps. Let's take a look at the specs. The Sur 6 uses an 8 core, 16 thread processor, and it boosts up to 4.9 GHz. With Radeon 680M GPU on board, it should also be able to play a good amount of games. Last time we saw this GPU was with a mini PC housing the 6800H, and they're very similar. The main difference is that the 6900HX model is officially regarded as an overclockable ready CPU. And it also shares the higher clock rates of the HS model, both on the CPU and the GPU. So let's dive in for a closer look. Better peel this off first. Ooh, pretty. At least the top is anyway, with the Scoochie style pattern. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, boop. Moving to the front, we have the pinhole for the BIOS reset. USB 3.2, a 10 megabits a second USB-C, a 3.5mm audio jack, and the power switch that sounds like this. On the right side we have a nicely sized air vent, and on the back is where most of the action is. We have a 2.5 gig LAN port, one USB 2, and a USB 3.2. For display we have HDMI, display port underneath, and next to that a full speed USB 4 Type-C port. For speakers, there's another 3.5mm audio jack on the back, and then DC input. It's kind of shocking to see there's no Kensington, but we never use that anyway. On the bottom we've got some labels, and instead of rubber feet, we've got these rubber bars. They give this mini PC a somewhat premium aura to it. They do a good job of keeping the unit in one place, while giving a little gap for air to get sucked in from below. It's about time for the size comparison. The Beeling Sur 6 is slightly larger than the Geekom A7. Roughly the same size as a GMK Tech K8, just a little shorter in height. Like most PCs, it's absolutely dwarfed by the Ace Magic AD08. And banana. Nintendo Game Boy or an SP. Can't see the screen, it's terrible. Measuring the tape. It's around this long. And a Roy Bosch tea bag. So let's give it a monitor, set of speakers, and an all-in-one keyboard, and turn it on. We're first greeted to a Windows setup screen, where we tell the computer which language to use. That'll give us a few more questions such as keyboard layout and username. Thankfully, we've not been asked for our network information, so we can safely test for any alterations before going online. Looking at the system's information screen, everything checks out. We have Windows 11 Pro installed. It is activated and didn't require us to go online, so the Windows 11 Pro key is already attached to the motherboard. Edge settings are all okay, but we did have some trouble in checking out the Windows Security tab. Even though it didn't fully open, the summary displays it's working, and as soon as we connect to our Wi-Fi and go online, we can see the Windows Security tab in all its full glory. We can update Windows to the latest version, and our chipset drivers too. We just need to click this at the top right, and Bob's your uncle. As it's a new PC, we usually go to ninite.com, where we can easily download and install free tools at the click of a button. And that can include security programs such as Avast and Altimobytes. 
and run a full scan on both, report that we have a clean system. As for use cases, this would be great for a student running LibreOffice with ease. We'll be able to use this for art projects, so things like Photoshop, Illustrator or Krita will just fly on this machine. As this mini PC is high spec, productivity tasks are also on the table, so if you want to make music, very yes. And that also includes editing video. If you primarily use the AV1 video codec, it might be better to get a mini PC that houses an Intel chip. Saying that, this computer is very capable. Of course we can use this for online shopping. Here's Amazon, and ah, there it is. And flipping heck, that is going pretty cheap. Definitely watch out for the sales. Let's check out video streaming. Here's Amazon Prime with the HD button lit. Netflix. And here are the stats. YouTube in 4K. And this mini PC does a surprisingly good job. And it doesn't even drop a frame when I do this. It's time for the benchmarks. As expected, the Sur 6 pulls ahead of both the 5000 and 6000 Ryzen series. It also edges out the 125H thanks to the onboard 680M GPU. We hope this will translate well in our games testing, and we're actually very surprised at how far this computer pulled ahead in the Cinebench scores. Crystal disk mark now, and we have good but not excellent speeds from our storage. Wi-Fi strength was fairly good, at 78% with our router 20 meters away through two layers of drywall. Connections weren't dropped, we could easily connect our Bluetooth controller. And with this hooked up, let's play some games. We'll first start with 2D, then move on to the more difficult to play titles. First up, Windjammers 2. Next up is Fortnite. We can get this one running really well on the performance renderer. Is Rocket League 1080p high quality settings. And we can even have a full match without any stuttering. Dota 2 1080p best settings. We're sitting around 80 FPS. Face me. Nice. Counter Strike 2 1080p high. With Tekken 8 on 1080p high, we're seeing the first signs of a struggle, and changing graphical settings to medium gives us around 60fps. Helldivers 2, 1080p medium, using the FSR balance setting gives us around 30 to 40fps. But if we slide over to performance, we're over 60. And Cyberpunk 2077 is also another game demonstrating how we can use FSR to our advantage. In the process of testing these games, we had a few issues installing software. For Epic Launcher, we needed to use the command prompt, but this workaround isn't ideal for the average user. And what was a bit unusual is that the Windows temp file was read-only and even the Windows Store didn't work, so we couldn't use Game Pass. But we did, however, find an easy solution for all of this. In System Recovery, select Reinstall Now, check this box, and then press OK. This will download all the Windows files, reinstall your system, but keep all drivers and data intact. A few minutes later, everything works as it should.
When it comes to upper tier emulation, this mini PC definitely has the chops. After the pipelines have been compiled, Wii U emulation is at a solid 60fps. And the same can be said for PlayStation 3, with Wipeout Fury running at full speed. Before we test out Linux, let's take a look at the BIOS. At first glance, it does seem fairly middle of the road. Not an amazing number of settings to change, and not too few either. But then we found this. The B-Link Sur 6 at stock was running in performance mode. Is this a problem? Well, we'd say no. I mean, there was no sign of thermal throttling, and the fan noise was fairly quiet. What we can take from this though is that the B-Link Sur 6 is a budget mini PC that has been tuned for performance. And we can see further evidence of this with the memory allocated to the GPU. Secure Boot is on at default, which is great for games promoting DRM like Valorant, but as we're against DRM and want to use Linux, Secure Boot should be disabled. So let's get our drive with Batacera installed and let the magic commence. Dual purpose, perhaps a nice birthday gift for Beverly. While it's better to leave the higher end systems in Windows, I prefer to use Batacera as a front end for most emulation. Batacera 39 detects our Wi Fi, we have no problem connecting to the network. And we can also connect our Bluetooth controller, giving us a nice gaming rig for all of our retro systems, such as the C64. Atari ST. Commodore Amiga. MS DOS. and also consoles such as the Xbox. While this is running at full speed, checking the temperatures, we have 90 degrees. In this case, we believe it's a software issue, as the Xbox emulator is the only one that was affected. If we change the design power to around 50%, we're still at full speed, while 10 degrees cooler. So let's now move on to the temperatures and the fan noise. And balance setting on idle, the system stays cool and is nearly completely silent. Pulling just on the 9 watts from the wall. On the load, the CPU temps are raised to around 70, and it's still a fairly quiet mini PC. Pulling 77 watts from the wall. Changing BIOS setting to performance definitely did surprise us, as the idle temps were cooler, but were still at near silent levels. At just under 10 watts. On the load again with the Grid Auto Support benchmark, the temperatures were almost the same but we were up 10 FPS in our averages, and fan noise was similar to the balance setting. At around 78 watts. Fan noise at its maximum can be heard during Xbox emulation, but please remember that this can easily be fixed, and should only be seen as an example as to how the fan is at its loudest. So far, it's a very nice PC, but let's take a look inside. To open it up, there are four screws underneath, in each corner. We'll be needing a small posi driver for this. Did you say screw hole? Then we can pull open the bottom plate. And this is pretty remarkable. On the left we've got a fan that sits just above the memory. And on the right a fairly large heatsink for the NVMe. There are two screws on the heatsink. And an extra four situated in each corner. Once these are all out we can lift off the plate. Gotta be careful, the fan's connected. And this is what the inside looks like. We've got two thermal pads for our NVMe, and there's another M2 slot in case we want to add storage. The DDR5 included was from Crucial, and this one's 5600 even though the bias reported otherwise. We get two sticks of this. According to the tech specs of the CPU, this one only runs up to 4800, but if it was using LP DDR5, 6400. Let's take a look at the NVMe. The one included is a P3 Plus M2, and at first glance it looks fairly bare bones. But if we check the numbers, we find out that this is an OEM version of the Crucial P3 Plus, leaving us with decent memory as well as decent storage. Under the NVMe, we have a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi controller by Intel, and we also tried lifting out the board. We did this by removing the four bolts in the corner, but we just couldn't get it out. We then inserted our NVMe with Ubuntu installed, and everything worked with flying colors. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even sound. Two thumbs up. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. 
there's no doubt that the B-Link Sur 6 has a lot of value under its hood. With its powerful processor, decent cooling, and Focus having most things tuned at stock, it's quite obvious as to why many people like to recommend these B-Link computers. As for the cons, Windows at stock seems to not have been tested at all. It was an easy fix, but outside that, we'd just be nitpicking. <laughs> the B-Link Sur 6 is a decent computer, one that we can easily recommend. Wait... The BIOS? The memory? And the NVMe stick all have AZW markings. I'm no conspiracy theorist, but could it be that B-Link are crucial in disguise? Oh, <laughs> come on! <laughs> Time for the summary. Anything else I don't really care as long as Windows isn't buggy.